Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to today's webinar session brought to you by Siksha.com and Gizma Business School, Germany. Student, this is an informative session about the master's program that are being offered by the school to international students. And before we move further, I would like to introduce our presenters from the business school today. So our first presenter is Professor Dr. Stephen Stein. Our second presenter is Dr. Ralph Frank. Our third presenter is Mr. Paris Jaswal. And our fourth presenter is Mr. Ravi Kumar. Student, an uh, important note for all of you. If you have questions, I will request you to please post your questions in the question section. We will take all the questions at the end of the session. And in case you want to ask questions directly to the presenters, I will request you to please click on the raise hand tab. I will unmute you and you can ask your questions directly to them. I would now request Dr. Stephen Steen to please start with the session. Thank you. A very good afternoon to India from Germany. Greetings from Germany. My name is Stefan Stein. I'm the president of Gizma University. I'm really happy to meet you this afternoon. So uh, what, what you see here on the first picture is the landmark, uh, landmark of Berlin, the Brandenburg Gate. And literally speaking, it is 800 meters to the right hand side where you get to our Berlin city campus and 800 meters to the left hand side where you meet our Chancellor Angela Merkel, you may know. So it is really directly located into the city. Next slide, please, Ravi. Um, next slide. So what, what I would like to introduce to you is why should you think about studying in Germany? So it is obviously all about made in Germany. That is a quality seal that is true for these nice cars as you see here uh, a nice Porsche car but that is of course true as well for education in Germany education made in Germany next slide please international students love Germany this is not only what uh, the German newspapers write as you can see here uh, the Bild Zeitung uh, main headline there uh, but it is also reflected by all the statistics. You see how over the last decades international students numbers in Germany developed and this is even true uh, in that pandemic. So uh, we are now uh, above 400,000 foreign students in Germany in total and you can see there is a, a steep increase over the last years um, and there are of course main reasons why so why to study in Germany and um, as you can see <clears throat> it is about quality studying in Germany the quality of the universities that is perceived by the foreign students but the main reason is of course the excellent job opportunities that are associated with Germany myself and Ralph we are going to talk about this more how we want to enable you to seek and also to catch these excellent job opportunities because this is all the studying at Gizma about. Next slide, please. There is, of course, also another reason why to study in Germany and maybe not in the United States, in the UK or wheresoever in this world. It's the reasonable cost of living. I give you here an impression what the average monthly cost of living in Berlin and area are about. Yeah, so, so uh, this is a really realistic uh, estimation i have a 22 year old son uh, studying also uh, so so i can tell you uh, really what these numbers are about of course the biggest portion is about housing uh, we will later talk about the services gizma is offering you here to um, to uh, find reasonably priced accommodation and uh, please calculate with roughly 900 up to 990 euros per month this is much much more affordable if thinking about london hong kong new york or whatsoever it's all far by far exceeding these figures next one please germany is also about rich culture in fact this is right next 
four kilometers away from our Berlin Potsdam campus, our brand new campus. I will in a minute show you some nice pictures about this campus. So this is UNESCO World Heritage, uh, the castle sunks to see when you want to, uh, to see uh, what a king is doing when he has plenty of cash and good taste walk there was the castle i had recently a couple of days ago the pleasure just next to the castle to introduce gizma to the local uh, to 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 local multipliers so it is really fantastic and germany has plenty more to offer in this regard next please regarding the job opportunities do not forget that germany is a really open country for international students one of the biggest and, and and most important points is probably that with graduation you have the right to stay another 18 months just to find your job and the thing about these 18 months is it makes you it, it, it makes it much much easier also, with regard to all the other regulations, you usually have transferring to Germany, find a job without studying in Germany. So this post-study visa is really a flexible instrument to, to get uh, familiar with the German job market and to find this job. 18 months, plenty of time, German, uh, German job market is again after the pandemic booming there is a gap especially in highly skilled talents as we will talk about later next one when thinking about studying in germany you need to know one thing it is about public versus private universities Gizma is a private university so expect a study atmosphere as you see on the right hand side of this chart public universities won't be able to offer you that that is really a typical study situation obviously before the pandemic right now they they are mainly closed um, so so expect like thousand one thousand students in uh, one room to follow one lecture you can imagine this has nothing to do with interaction. No modern pedagogy can be applied here. There is no interaction between the tutor and the students. There are no group assignments. There is no group work. This is merely not possible. So it is all about um, small groups, a gizma, personal atmosphere, uh, communicating directly to your tutors, and the student services we will later on comment about. Next one. So, why study at Gizma? You have now plenty of arguments why studying in Germany already. Let me introduce Gizma to you. Your future is being made at Gizma. And why can I say that? Because we have built a brand new campus. This is our Berlin Potsdam campus. You see these pictures. This is how that campus looks like. It is a so-called smart building, smart in a literal sense. Yeah. So, so it is built for collaborative learning. It is built for creative people to enhance innovation, uh, open classroom situation. This is what this building is all about. And it infuses also the way we are teaching at Gizma and uh, this is all part of one concept please expect the concept of the lectures but also the concept of the building being one holistic concept just to to infuse you with innovation with creativity and collaborative spirit next one So just, just that you get an idea where we are located. I talked about Potsdam, I talked about Berlin. I like to call these the twin cities. These are our two university campus. And uh, twin cities means uh, 
Berlin is on the one side of the river, Potsdam is on the other side of the river. You may have uh, watched the Netflix movie uh, with Tom Hanks, Bridge of Spice, yeah? you, you, where, where they in, in former times of the Cold War exchanged the agents, the Soviet agents against the American, US American agents, and you walk from one side that is Berlin to the other side that is Potsdam. And it's just the bridge in between, so very close by. Gizma has has three more campuses. Uh, the one is in Hannover for our language school, Hamburg, our cooperation campus with Kingston University, and we also have a London campus for um, executive trainings. Next, please. What can you study with us? So here's an overview of our GISMA study programs where we have our own degree awarding power. This is all about business and tech. We have, so to say, two platforms. For bachelor, master, we have the business platform and the tech platform. So you can study with us international business management. You can study with us data science and AI. Um, and it is connected with each other. Yeah, so it is all about the digital future of the economy and there are linkages between the program. So international business management, data science, there's also a study program, leadership for digital transformation. Many companies still have to walk through that process. And there is, of course, our global MBA, which is AMBA accredited. This is the most important seal you can get as a university for your MBA program to achieve and being awarded with the so-called AMBA seal. Gizma carries this seal. Next one, please. So be beyond these programs, we have on offer several partner degree programs. So I like to say, tell me with who you partner and I tell you who you are. We partner with highly renowned universities, triple crown universities like Grenoble Ecole de Management in France, uh, Kingston University in London, and also uh, the largest law school in the United Kingdom, University of Law. And together with them, we have a broad portfolio of master programs in marketing, in strategy, HR, leadership, uh, project management, but of course also data science. So you have a rich choice and we are their partner to deliver in Germany. Yeah? So, so that is the cool thing about it. Uh, you can choose between Gizma own degrees and you can choose um, also one program uh, out of that portfolio from really renowned partner universities and that gives you also a taste who Gizma is. Obviously these institutions would not partner with us um, if they would have the assumption um, Gizma is not the right partner uh, to be on that triple crown lab. Next one please. What to expect regarding studying? It is all about the Gizma Flex model, it is about uh, lectures, e-learning, self-paced, and, and, and it is uh, all about interaction you can choose. In, in, in other ind industries, you are talking about um, <clears throat> multi-channel management. This is quite unusual for a university. You choose the way you want to study. If you want to study remotely, if you want to study online, then you choose just the, the virtual path and you participate in lectures online. Uh, you work with our e-learning package and um, you decide how to self-pace uh, your learning assets. Mm, next one, please. So please expect, especially regarding the teaching and learning package that I mentioned, please expect uh, several elements from audio video nuggets. We like to talk about hands-on labs because it is all about um, interactivity. 
interactive learning, learning in case studies, having the practitioners in the floor, knowledge checks, quizzes, and really getting to the point in our summaries. Next one. It's all about digital literacy in the future. Expect to study with us different, differently than with other universities. So you see several pictures here. You see a picture from a university library in the year 1771. There is the same picture, same angle that was taken this year, 2021. Anything has changed? Nothing has changed. The color of the photo has changed. But the way how to grab knowledge has not changed at all. This contrasts very much with what we do at Gizma. On the right hand side, that icon, obviously it's a smartphone, shows you our library. It is all digital. Our library is your smartphone and it contains 600,000 textbooks. 600,000 textbooks. And I like to say with Gizma, you study the way you use Spotify. Yeah, it, our library works exactly the same way as Spotify works. You choose the textbook that you would like to read. Our professors give you recommendations. They guide you through their module descriptors. They are designed in a way you find a bookmark, you click like you click on a on a web page, and then the chapter you have to read, the exercise you have to do pops up. This is modern teaching and learning at Gizma. Next one, please. And we push this a little bit further. I started with voice studying in Germany. It's all about the job opportunities. So please expect state of the art technology to boost your career. We support your career by certain by 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 certain instruments to enhance your opportunities in the German job market. Let me focus on one aspect here. You see on the left hand side, on the upper left hand side, you see my CV check. Obviously, I was not doing so, so good with my CV, with my personal CV. We offer you a tool. Every everyone, every student at Gizma has the opportunity to upload their CV and get a check with an AI based tool analyzing what to improve that your cv your application is really recognized with an um, uh, in, in a company and that the hr responsible person really reads the cv and invites you to um to a conversation so this is ai based that is really fancy i did it myself and you can really improve and learn a lot this is also about interview training there, there is a new instrument that we have implemented only last week. 200,000 questions that may come up in a, a personal interview with a company. So you have the opportunity to train and um, <clears throat> to, to prepare yourself for such a conversation. And we also introduced a platform where we can transform into avatars. Where, avatar, where we as avatars meet companies yeah, in one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, companies present themselves to students. You present yourself to the company. Next one, please. And when you study with Gizma, quality made in Germany. So obviously Gizma is fully state recognized and accredited. And um, we carry the state recognition from the state of Brandenburg. That is a big advantage for international students because the Brandenburg regulation is a very open one for international students. We have to offer easy pathways. Uh, we have the accreditation, the concept accreditation of the so-called Science Council. Programs are accredited and especially proud we are about our AMBA accreditation for the MBA program. 
Next one, please. Gizma is now in Germany operating for more than 20 years. Just type in Gizma and LinkedIn and check where you find our alumni. This is what I did for this chart. Yeah, so you will see them linked to well-known companies, international companies, interesting jobs. Not surprisingly, most of the most of the alumni are telling us that they somehow have to deal with international topics, and uh, at the same time, um, they find a job pretty fast. This is from our last review. Uh, it is 90% of the students find a job within four months, and I think the salaries are also very much comparable what you would expect on an international level. Next one, please. Ralf now takes over. Yes, thank you, Stefan. And now it's up for me to speak a little bit about uh, the, term, uh, the, the, the type of content, if you want. Uh, what are we teaching and what are our approaches to teaching? Um, what can you expect? Next slide, please. Um, when you look at um, uh, at the, the kind of master programs, the MBA uh, that we offer, uh, it is it is clear that they need to fit in an uh, into uh, a time that has changed a lot from let's just say going back to the point in time in 1996 when I took my my MBA. Uh, there is a, a new business models are out there. Most of them have to do with digital technology, so often referred to as digitalization. Sometimes digitalization, sometimes digital transformation. Especially if you look at some of the large-scale brand names that we have here on the slide, like Airbnb, uh, Uber, especially. Now the tricky thing about Airbnb and Uber, you might know, Airbnb um, is in in the hotel industry, but doesn't operate a, a single hotel themselves. Uber is in the transportation taxi industry without having actually uh, uh, their own taxis and their own drivers. This kind of business models, we feel, uh, bring with them some kind of tension, some kind of dynamism that needs to be reflected in the syllabus of our programs, and effectively it is. So it is understanding how digital solutions uh, create different business models and so you wouldn't be surprised i mean I'm, I'm a professor of organizational transformation i look a lot at what it is that digital technology can do in terms of innovation in terms of creating solutions that differ from the conventional type of solutions that we still have in the markets next slide please so what we what 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 we are teaching at gizma basically is based on the conviction that um that business and technology go hand in hand. Whereas perhaps you could be become a good business person some 50 years ago, and you could be an engineer in the technical domain. Um, today's world requires you to understand technology and how technology enables you to arrive at different um, business models. But that's not just all of the story. There's also something else that, which is given in green here. These are all future requirements. Some of them we consider as more important than the other ones, for instance, solving complex problems. Uh, we live in the VUCA world. I think we have a slide on VUCA in a in a, in a second. Uh, so leadership uh, has uh, uh, become something else uh, that it used to be uh, the coercive type of style that you would expect some 50 years ago. Critical thinking. With all the literature, with all the material, all the information out there, probably one of the most important uh, personal characteristics that you can train and that we will train you is critical thinking. Looking behind uh, the, the literature, reading between the lines, looking at something and trying to figure out how does that fit the world? What is someone else telling me in this world? So selective uh, um, capabilities, creativity, very important, especially when it comes to innovation. Many people think innovation, these are the uh, sort of um, the, the thoughts under the shower, you know, the genius strikes you in the morning. Now, innovation and creativity is something that you can also manage, that you need to look at as something that you need to practice. A global mindset is um, so, so important. I teach one 
uh, one module at Gizma, which is called Behavioral Competences in, a, in Virtual Teams. And the new normal in global organizations is that you're running, that you're working in or even leading global teams where you have people from, with different mindsets, different cultures together. It's not, And that in a virtual setup where you don't have them sit next to your own desk or your next office, the only way to communicate is through Teams or Zoom or what have you. And this requires you to have to start off with a global mindset. Then strategic entrepreneurial mindset, um, even though you may be employed by a large scale organization, you need to think of your own business line as something that requires you to approach it with an entrepreneurial mindset. How can you actually make more revenues? How can you bring resources to bear on this organization? Then something that is very close to my heart personally and, and Stefan's as well, that is ethics and social responsibility. Uh, if, if you read uh, the, 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 the press these days about large scale organizations and also what is happening in the political arena, a lot is being determined by social responsibility, corporate social responsibility, sustainability is the talk, and of course climate change and net zero and everything that, uh, that, that uh, has to do with how to solve the problems of the future, uh, the, which are already showing themselves. And of course, this all, that's something we said before, leveraging technology. We, we believe that technology provides answers, not the only answer, but some, uh, some answers to, to bring technology to bear and leverage on some of the issues which are out there. Next slide, please. So VUCA, I've mentioned that before, you may have heard the term. VUCA is a term that we borrow from the US American Army. It's, it is an acronym that stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity and is effectively a way to describe what is happening in modern societies. Volatility meaning that something that, uh, that, that appears is, uh, and, and something that occurs might occur, occur with such a dynamism and does not grow slowly. Uncertainty is what are some of the developments we're currently seeing in this world? Um, in which directions are they leading us? Complexity, yes, sometimes this is also referred to as systemic, probably complexity is the better term. Uh, our life is complex. Many things are interrelated, interact with, with each other. You don't know, often you do not know with a problem that you look at where's actually the starting point. It's like a net that you actually lift at one, one, one corner and everything else is moving at the same time. And then ambiguities for some of the developments that we see, we're not yet certain whether they're good or whether they're actually bad. So something that is good in a certain context might turn out to be ex exactly the opposite. So what does it mean in terms of behavior? and what we need to look at. There is a digital disruption. Many things are disruptive. Uh, we need to in innovate and it's unrelentlessly uh, innovating. There, there shouldn't be any stop. There is no plateau anymore where an organization says, oh, well, we've innovated for the last 10 years. Let's just take a break for five years. No time for a break. Change is ever present. Many of the problems we encounter are ill-defined. Um, you know, that, that is something that we teach to our students. Uh, we give them case studies and then they come back and say, well, there's some information missing. Well, welcome to the world. That's like in management situations. You often do not have all of the information. There is uncertainty. Then there is often something like harsh time constraints. If you don't react today, um, uh, an opportunity might be gone or someone else might react. So uh, you do not have all of the information on hand. Well, welcome to our world. This is what reality looks like. Then the information you get might not be information. It might not have enough signal. It's noise, in other words. Then we as humans, uh, we are cognitively lazy. I am cognitively lazy and everyone else, you might uh, uh, think about yourself, no, I'm not. Well, we as humans, we are sometimes not made for the kind of world where we have an overload of information. That's where the, where the algorithms in, come in. Much better as us as detecting patterns. We're good at, at identifying information, algorithms and technology good at actually computing the information. Over demanding CEOs, that's also, also something Chef and I, we've worked in, in large scale organizations, effectively most of us at in, 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 in Gizma, and we know sometimes CEOs, you know, they, they give you two minutes time to deliver an idea you spend, you know, two months on, you know. Well, what, what can you do? Competitive pressure ever increasing. We now have a global world. When it used to be okay to 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 win against two competitors in your home country, 
uh, in the future, a competitor can be virtually everywhere around this globe. And given the logistics that we have, it's not a problem to ship any product from somewhere around the globe to where you are. So this is a different situation to the one that we had 30, 40 years ago. And there's a precarious work-life balance. We all work a lot. It is effectively, people in in a Zoom or Teams area where you work from home often work much more. We need to make sure that we strike a balance between work and relaxation because relaxation is also very important for you to 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 keep your strength. Next slide, please. So our pedagogical model, you would expect a business school like us to have a pedagogical, effectively a university, to have a pedagogical model. Our convictions are that students need to be prepared for a VUCA world. We've just touched on that. Then the teaching covers authentic and real world cases. Again, that's something I mentioned before. Um, you, you can expect us to come up sometimes with with, with uh, things that look like anecdotes or some cases where you think, well, half of the information is missing. That is reality in many industries. You do not have all of the information in an end. Then knowledge is an enabler, but not an end. You, you go to a university, you go, come to us, Gizma, it's not that you can quote from, from many of these books or have a nice quotation when someone asks. It is actually making your knowledge work. That's what it's about. So case-based decision-making is the norm. We typically, as humans, given the behavioral and, and cognitive limitations that we all have, um, there's some 50 years of psychology under the belt looking at the cognitive and psych uh, psychological constraints that we act under as, as humans that we typically tend to orient to other cases which have a similarity to the case at hand. There's nothing wrong with that. We just need to know and train in detecting patterns and similarity. And if, if you arrive at that point, you may also recognize and acknowledge there is no uh, right way of managing. You know, forget the textbooks who tell you here is the one way of exactly uh, treating a specific issue at hand. No, there is a contextually appropriate one. And what what is good in some situation may not turn out to be good in another situation. So knowing what kind of situation you're dealing with, what is appropriate is probably more important than being able to actually quote the one number one solution, the best practice that you find in a textbook that personally speaking, I never believed in anyway. So being well reflected, know what you're doing. Where are my constraints? Where are my cognitive limitations? What do I know? What is it actually the constraint I'm acting on that is very, very um, important and that we believe is the hallmark of leaders. Reflection, showing reflection, thinking about being considerate. Information literacy, being able to ask the right question is a must. Uh, now, with all the information around, information, it, it's actually not information. Technically speaking, you would say there's plenty of data around us. Now, the act of interpreting this data makes it information. Now, which data to look at, which data to discard, uh, when to stop searching for information, that all has uh, to do with information literacy. literacy. And then asking the right questions, what to do with the information is probably the mo the superb kind of uh, characteristic from a leader. And then something I mentioned before, managing interculturally and virtual teams, that's the new normal. You know, sometimes you, you, you may have people in your team you never meet. So what? You can still work with them, provided you have a global mindset that allows you to understand that sometimes the friction that you might see is not a friction in terms of context. It might have to do that you need to, as a leader, uh, speak about uh, policies. How do we want to commute with each other, communicate with each other? What do we do want to do? Um, what is what is what is what is the way of of actually working together in my team? There is a lot you can do about the the microclimate in your team, provided you know what uh, different cultures bring to the table and what you what it is you have to manage so the front of the, so the assumptions that that sort of a guiding in here is that the frontal type of lecturing stefan showed you one photo with a, 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 a public university where people are in this big lecture room we learned yesterday that in some universities 1000 people in the lecture room that's the norm yeah, and, and and then what can you do as a lecturer? You stand, you stood in front of the of the students. All you can can do is actually can do the kind of front lecturing. That's not us. That's not our style. Our style is interactive lecturing. So when I teach uh, students, the kind of teaching I've just been teaching this morning looks like about at least 50% of the time, 
uh, we work together in groups, we discuss things, we look at things, we sometimes look at videos, we have some accompanying mat material, the asynchronous learning part Stefan spoke about. So that is what, what, what you can expect from Gizma. A lot of discussion and sometimes problems for which I as a lecturer don't have the solution. I want you to come up with a solution or at least discuss what might be appropriate in that context. That makes a whole lot of difference. So and then, then the students, I always involve my students, Stefan does the same and the other, my other colleagues do that as well. Um, we want to discuss with you. So when I speak, I, I just mentioned the term when I'm teaching, in my mindset I'm actually working with students. I'm working on specific problems, specific issues or interesting questions that you might encounter at a later stage as a manager. So our students are active and independent. We are more like, if you want, kind of guides or coaches. Um, and we appreciate that students actually are able to organize themselves. Uh, before I actually send out an email to students, they are actually organized in their WhatsApp group and the messages around. I sometimes being confronted in my own teaching that people have screenshots of my of my teaching that on uh, uh, my my working with them just two seconds ago. And they're so so collaborative that they actually share the information before I can do that. That is very very interesting and 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 and, and a very appeasing kind of uh, thing to see compared to this large scale universities that Stefan showed you a, a, a photo about. And of course, we all love games and enjoy competition tournaments and quizzes. That's all part of our our teaching. Um, that we try to make it a little bit more sportive. Let's just put it this way. Next slide, please. So learning experience and student service as Gizma, please. Next slide, you can see here a student with a couple of books. That is from something that is uh, uh, the the elder world. Well, when we when we go out and uh, and all of us as lecturers and and and, and uh, of of the faculty, we all have industry contacts that we've had many many years ago. So there are interesting people out there, and and it is our job as faculty to reach out to them and bring them to the world of Gizma. Now, Stefan actually started uh, this year with um, a new series of talks. Uh, these are webinars. Uh, we actually had one yesterday, but the first one that we had on, in the Gizma thing, I, I believe, was sometime earlier this year. Um, so the idea is we bring uh, a biggie, a big shot from industry uh, to our students, to our to to our, our, our alumni, and to our network, and they speak about a subject that they want to speak about. Typically, we have a, a specific topic. This year, we had sustainability and uh, sustainability strokes, sustainable finance. So a little bit of a focus on finance. You can see here Jürgen Richterink, who is the the uh, first vice president and chief information uh, chief, chief investment officer. Sorry from the European uh, Bank of Restructuring and Development, so a classic bank that looks into topics like sustainability and topics like how to, in third world countries, actually provide finance to specific infrastructure or green projects. So we spoke about yesterday, we had a technology investor who has her own model of investing. Stefan spoke about finance. We had someone talk about um, using alternative uh, methods like AI, machine learning in actually providing rating of, of, of organization. So that is one of the things that we want to make sure, not just in the series of Gizma thing, but also in actually the sessions that we have every now and then we have a, an industry speaker or someone who, let's just say, is running the marketing department of a fast moving consumer good company, comes to us and speaks about um, their experiences so students can ask and, and inquire and get to know a little bit uh, uh, about the, 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 the everyday realities in organizations that we as, as lecturers have to actually experienced but cannot portray and transport as, as good as we can when we have an industry speaker. Next slide, please. So our company networks comes alive through many initiatives. I just mentioned professionals as lecturers and guest speakers through internships case studies, projects, working students' relationships, and topics and mentoring for thesis, like for a bachelor and master thesis. Uh, that's what you can expect from us. That's, that's, that, that is that's that is a given at a business school and a given at uh, Gizma anyway. Next slide, please. 
So uh, we have partnerships with renowned companies. For instance, you might know German uh, software company SIP, uh, and we lack, we cooperate with renowned German companies. Uh, this is part and parcel of we have an interest for you to reach out to German industry, and obviously this is something that also has um, a flip side if you want. So the 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 industry. Uh, needs to know about us and needs to 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 send their students to us. So it's it's part and parcel of being part of a closely knit industry um, network. And if you know if 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 you were to know the German industry landscape, you would know that apart from Berlin being the capital of Germany, Berlin is also the hotspot of many startup companies. Probably the the the, the biggest uh, um, uh, network of startup companies uh, in in continental Europe. Um, a very big one, also with a focus not on just on, on retail industries, but also on financial services industries. So reaching out to these industries and working with them is uh, part and parcel of our mission as uh, Gizma uh, to become uh, and be one one of the leading German digital uh, Hochschule, which is um, universities. So that, that's 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 that is our that is our goal, and so we work towards that goal. And uh, being in Berlin. Obviously, this they, the next startup is only you know, uh, as we say in German, a stone th throw away from from you. Next slide, please. We have a career center uh, with us that is helping students to make connections in the job market. Um, so the the key objectives of 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 the of the career center at our business school is connect students with companies and employers. Such increased employability. I've just been in a lecture with HR people. The days are over when you would join an organization at the age of 18 or 20 and stay there for the next 40 years. In these ages, what you need to make sure as a student is increase your employability. Now, that's probably your job and we help you with that. But to to never believe for a single moment that what you have learned this week is going to stay with you for the next 20 years or so. These days are over. They, they, you, you need to constantly learn and, and, and acquire uh, knowledge. And that is that is very, very important for you as a student in order to increase and, and maintain your employability. So the Career Center also is supposed to inspire the next generation of leaders. We want to put you into positions where you can change this world and where you can actually make a contribution so that at a later date, that's, that's if you go back into motivation theory, Feeling that you have made a contribution to an organization, to the goals of an organization, is one of the biggest drivers of personal motivation and, if I can put it in a very prosaic term, happiness. The simple thing of happiness and fulfillment in your job. And, of course, provide the career centers also made to provide access to the latest job. Some of the students, just to give you a couple of names, have gone to work for companies like Zalando, which is a an internet-based um, fashion outlet, one of the biggest ones in, in Europe, a Uniqlo, Delivery Hero, Wafer, and Siemens. Siemens, you might know, Siemens, Siemens is one of the biggest German industrial companies. It's not a bad company to work for at all. Next slide, please. Uh, Dr. Ralph, uh, just wanted to sort of intervene. So, um, we have a lot of questions from the student coming in. Uh, and because we have a bit of time constraint, would request if we can run the presentation a bit quick so that we can take questions Absolutely. from the students. You go ahead. I could talk for hours. Well, that's in the nature of the thing, so to say. But I'll stop here. I I I hope and I believe with Stefan and I, we've given you enough arguments and to whet your appetite to come and study at Gizma. Thank you. No problem. I'll, I'll take the questions. I'm going to start with the live questions. Meanwhile, meanwhile, students, if you want to ask questions directly to the presenters, could request you to please click on the raise hand tab. I will unmute you and you can ask your question. So the first student I'm going to unmute is Avishi Shah. Avishi, I would request you to please unmute yourself and ask your question. Good evening, sir. Uh, am I audible to do? Yes. Uh, so basically, I wanted to ask, uh, what would be the average cost for a student to study at this point? The fees. I think, Ravi Paras, there is a question for you. Yeah. So uh, I want to ask, are you interested in doing a master's degree at Gizmo or a bachelor's degree? Master's. Master's. 
So uh, the typically the one year fees for a master's program can cost you about 15,000 euros to 16,000 euros. Uh, this does not include scholarships. So scholarships options are also available to students where you can get 20 to 30 percent off on your tuition fees. So once you send in your profile to uh, Siksha, uh, we can always evaluate your profile and based on your experience, your marks and uh, your profile, you will be offered admission at this one. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Avishi. Uh, moving to next student, I'm going to unmute Stuti Watson. Stuti, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Please, this is not Stuti. I'm Gaurav Sharma. I'm the father of Stuti. So yeah. she may be also sitting in this webinar. I'm having okay. several questions. Uh, first, uh, yeah, first we have compared it with several countries, but we have not compared it with Canada. While in India, students are moving to Canada in more numbers. So what about the uh, leaving cost? And uh, if we compare it with Canadian, Canadian education, Hello, or, or, or I can ask question in one one go. So, so Ravi, maybe maybe you share the screen again and show that one chart that we have prepared with a living cost. Yeah. So, um, my my thinking is even even though Berlin and the bigger area of Berlin is now you see the. To see the cost that we put together i think that is that is really reasonable we we didn't put toronto for example or vancouver here on the chart but be assured uh, from my experience if you would check the numbers uh, it would be um, much higher than compared to to berlin uh, and the larger berlin area uh, this is by by our experience really an affordable area you are in germany a highly developed country you would probably even expect higher rates it is crucial of course uh, especially regarding uh, housing and and this is the reason maybe Ravi, you, you jump into uh, <clears throat> you jump into that slide with our other services regarding the uh, um, accommodation service my, yeah my next question is uh, as I have gone through several YouTubes, and in all those YouTubes, it has been clearly mentioned or it has been clearly explained that in Germany, uh, priority is given to public universities if we consider it to job. When we discuss it about GISMA, it is a public university. So will there be any fight, any challenge uh, post uh, So, 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 yeah, I, I, I lost you now, but, but I got your question. Um, so, um, we, we recently, uh, we, we recently conducted a study that was published also in, in Germany on a broader scale, and we exactly wanted to know what do private universities do different from public universities. And this independent study has been conducted by an independent institution, came up with something really surprising, and it is exactly the opposite of your assumption. It is, in fact, more the private universities that are bringing the students into the jobs. The reason why is, Ralph explained to you, we are bringing practitioners into the classroom. He, he mentioned that Gizma Think series. Yeah, these these are yeah. highly highly ranked practitioners. You get in contact with. This is the secret. Can you imagine a practitioner on the left hand side of that picture standing in front of you? You don't even have the opportunity yeah, yeah. To, to get it to get in touch with that person. Yeah, they won't even recognize you. I tell you how it works. Yeah, because Ralph and myself, we are doing this both. We, we invite the people. They are keen on you guys. Yeah, they, they are coming to us because they know Ralph is a super professor. Stefan might be as well. They are delivering state-of-the-art content. Sometimes they even develop this content in a joint effort with us. 
and and then they they tell us hey we are in need we have a gap we are looking for qualified people and then it is of course up to you this is not a secret i'm telling you and i want to be frank with you 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 have to perform then of course and and you we we open the door but you have to walk through that is clear as well yeah and and the answer to your question is with private universities you have much better job opportunities than with public ones because what was the other outcome is that um, that, that employers are saying, hey, when there is somebody coming from a private university, they know how to do it. They have learned hands-on. On the left-hand side in the picture, it's about reading books. Yeah, It's about reading books, being very scientific oriented, but no hands-on. Ralph was talking about hands-on labs. This is our secret. Please expect that. Okay. So there is no challenge for blue card or PR if it is from private university or a public university. There is no uh, differentiation between them. I, I did not fully understand. Maybe maybe some of the colleagues can can translate for me. Um, uh, I, I acoustically Simon? did not get. Yeah. So he's asking: Is there any challenge if somebody? Uh, completes his studies from a private institution rather than a public institution and in getting his uh, PR. Is there any difference? He is asking this question. No, 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 no. It's it's the same law, and and the rule is if when you when you have the degree uh, from German university, you 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 must have finished in Germany. You you must have entered the country with a study visa. Then everybody has the same rights. Yeah um so there would be a big discussion in germany if some people have other rights than than others yeah so so um this this is clearly said and you have then full rights yeah if you if you obtain the study visa then obtain the degree uh, all the doors are open for you Arvan, and as i'm saying as the, yeah the global mba at germany is of 12 months so the, uh post completion of this 12 months MBA, will it be recognized worldwide? Means if we approach to US or any other country, so this 12 months MBA will be acceptable, acceptable for them? Yes, that, that is a very simple answer. Yeah, so, so, so it is accredited, it is even number accredited, so it is globally recognized, it has German credentials, it is state recognized. Uh, so, um, the simple answer to your question is yes. Okay, your QS ranking is 123, which is pretty good. It's not, means very nice ranking. So, and you are offering two uh, MS programs in computer science. One is of 12 months and one is of 24 months. So, what is the difference between both the programs? So, Ralph, do you want to take this question, or should, should I comment on that one? The the difference Actually, being, if you if you if you take if you take the 12, 12 months program, you study full time. If you take the twenty four, you study part time. That's as, as simple as it is. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I have got you. But both are and highly uh, highly co highly commendable programs. Uh, and that is almost something like a, a unique selling proposition in USP that everyone dreams of in marketing. Let me just put in a little bit. It, it's not a commercial. It's, it's we're very proud to actually have these these uh, these programs uh, because they reflect our thinking about what is important in, in the future. Is is the combination of both? It's management. And, and 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 the digital sciences this is uh, so in, in other words this is a, a program that is almost like a, a signature program for us great and uh, last is you already told about job and what about uh, winter depression and all means how the climate like in canada it's too harsh uh, there is highly winter depression and it's very difficult to survive in Canada. So what about Germany, the weather conditions? The, the, did, I, did I hear well the weather conditions? Like um, this is, this is, I, I this is co co continental Europe. 
I cannot promise whether, okay, I, ca I cannot promise whether conditions like on Goa, for example, yeah, there is probably <laughs> <also> whether, <laughs> much much better place. Yeah, so uh, G German summers tend to be. Uh, yeah, quite cool, sometimes also rainy, uh, but sometimes the sun is shining. You are in Berlin, Potsdam, so here the climate is usually a little bit warmer, and it is for sure a little bit warmer than in Canada, especially during the winters. Yeah, don't expect minus 40 degrees or so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the mode of uh, education will be German or English? English. It will be English. English. Or the student has to learn it from outside. No, student has an option of taking a part-time German classes, which are offered at our campuses. So, if your daughter is interested in learning German, she can enroll in those programs uh, at our campus. But all our programs are taught in English. Okay, sure. thank you, thank you very much. A lot of stupid questions, but important to know. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Moving to next uh, student, I am going to unmute uh, is Abhishek Das. Abhishek, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Abhishek. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, hello, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so, uh, my name is Abhishek. Uh, so, sir, I, currently I am working in a, in, a, in one of the MNC in India. And I'm willing to do a management study as a master's course in Germany. So, sir, uh, do what are the criteria means? <clears throat> do do I have to give IELTS or something like the English competency test, something like that, to get enrolled in in the universities? Like, I mean, maybe you you show on yeah. the screen the chart that we have prepared or pass. Yeah. Sorry, you forgot your name. Uh, but yeah, um, if you have done your bachelor's, you can uh, apply to either any of our master's program in MSc, or you can also apply to MBA. The only difference of criteria here would be we need three years of work experience for MBA. Uh, but for MSc programs, uh, we operate through our Gizma University, which uh, our professors also mentioned that we have our programs from Gizma University. And we do also have programs with our partner universities, which are University of Law, Kingston and Grenoble. So considering your profile, we, we will have to look at the documents as well. What qualification do you have? And as you can see that the IELTS requirement is six uh, for mm. some programs, 6.5 for other programs. It varies program to program. It depends which MSc program you're choosing. So the requirement might vary. Okay. And alternatively, we also accept uh, medium of instruction letters. So if you have uh, studied in English in your bachelor's program, uh, then we also accept medium of instruction letter as well, which should be English. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Abhishek. I, I hope uh, we have another two, three minutes. We can take a few more questions, if that's not a problem. Please go ahead. So the next student I'm going to unmute is Ashwini Kole. Ashwini, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, everyone. Uh, so my question is a little similar with the Abhishek's question. Um, just the difference is uh, I have already done my um, MBA from Human Resource and Human Resource uh, here, and I'm having something around two years of experience. So is there any advantage if I have already done my MBA here and if I apply in Germany for MBA and I can see in the on the screen that the work experience required is three years so um, is there any advantage I'll get if I already have completed my master's and having experience for two years so my, my suggestion would rather be if, if you have already uh, and that is what I understood an MBA you, you have of course 
obtained already the basic management knowledge that is required also for, for these positions. And um, I, I would rather recommend then to, to seek for another master program that is complementary to that, to add, um, to add a differentiator in the job market. Yeah, so, so I could think, for example, choosing something with data science to prepare you for, for uh, digital transformation. If you have already, if you have already uh, a specialization in HR, yeah, choose, for example, leadership for digital transformation. And there are certain overlappings. And what we could do then, of course, also in your case, we, we would need to, to look precisely at your curriculum. Uh, but when you have already certain credentials that you have earned that we can recognize onto our master programs, yeah, so you won't have to do the entire master program again, but we will tailor made to you to add your complementary competences here. That would be my recommendation. Not just do another MBA. I think that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, but, but let's go for let's go for complementaries to even um, to even boost, so to say, your opportunities in the job market. That would be my recommendation. Yes. So, as per your suggestion, am I eligible for that particular boost up course? Uh, because I'm having just two years of experience. So, so, so the um, so the AMBA MBA is a minimum requirement of three years. Uh, that, that, that is uh, a knockout criteria. Uh, if, if there are only two years of work experience, we cannot enroll. Yeah, that, that is a very strict regulation. So uh, therefore, I would then rather recommend, for example, leadership for digital transformation to, to especially upgrade with the digital literacy. OK, yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashwini, for your question. I'll take the last question now. So the next student I'm going to unmute is Kiran Karunakaran. Uh, Kiran, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. So I had a couple of questions. So during this pandemic stage, will the classes be taken online or, or will it be on the campus? Well, maybe you take that one. You, you, you can infuse with, you are the inventor of that concept. Um, we have, uh, Stefan showed you on the one slide and perhaps, yes, thank, thank you, thank you, Robert. That, that's, that's the one minute that um, we always have a physical classroom and a virtual Teams uh, situation. You might call it hybrid situation. So you have people sit in class, uh, for instance, those who are already in Berlin or have planned to come to Berlin, and if you not you are not planning to come to Berlin um, and stay where you are right now, you can participate in a virtual classroom if you want. And during the pandemia situation that we had, we had everything, uh, including the the we call it the, the lectures. It's, it's actually called synchronous teaching. We had this in uh, through Teams or Zoom or through a learning management system, all delivered virtually. So uh, I'm, 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 I dare say uh, it is probably a little bit more fun if you have some students in class, but we can, if we want to, deliver everything virtually. All right. And the other, so the other two, two, two categories, if I can just say this, uh, where it says here e-learning, that is provided through a learning management system that Stefan has also shown anyway, where you have a lot of content that is uh, something that you actually visit when you have the time, if you have the time, it's asynchronous. So you do it in the when when you have the time and the self pace is the same. You can have a physical learning group, or you can online web based learning. So we can you you can participate in the program. It's a multi channel. You can participate in the program as you like. And some students, to give you an idea, who are based in Berlin or Potsdam, they they some of them attend classes. Some of the classes sometimes they attend only once in a while. It is up to them. The learning experience is the same. And, All right. and if I may add to and if I may add to that one, yeah, you may decide right now. I start mm -hmm. online, maybe also because of visa availability, waiting processes whatsoever. And then at a later point in time, you say, Hey, now everything is settled. I come to Germany and you really can seamlessly switch between the channels. Yeah. This is what we mean with saying study the way you want. It it fits to your needs. 
you know this this is a very flexible approach and and you decide whatever are the requirements from your end all right sir thank you oh, so the last question i had was uh, compared to canada or the united states how is the curriculum different in gizma from them I'm not sure I got so, this yeah. right. What's the difference in the curriculum between programs in the US and Canada and, and ours? Yes, that was the exact question. Well, it's, it's, it's so probably maybe... when, you, when you look at, at uh, uh, I, I have a first step and step and then you correct me if that's okay. Um, when you when you compare, uh, when, when you look at, at, the, at the perspective of it from what, what do you need to learn in order to become a, a better manager or to become a manager? Chances are, at face value, if you look at it from a from a flyer perspective, there's not too much difference. I would say you have classical things like marketing, you have a leadership, um, you have uh, some some other topics like uh, behavior competencies, some of the psychology you expect. So, in other words, finance, accounting, that that's all all the same. The difference is when you actually look into mm -hmm. the detailed or granular. Uh, syllabus, and that's something I try to 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 transport when I when I was was my part in the presentation, where you actually have different kinds of uh, contents, uh, more adapted to the kind of uh, VUCA world that we see, to the kind of uh, um, requirements that we see managers, and there we might be different from the US. We might be. Can I just say this in in, in with, with all the due respect to all the US, American, and Canadian business schools? We are more modern. We are more state of the art. We have already integrated digital thinking and some of the digital philosophy into most of the uh, most of the uh, modules that we teach. Stefan, and now you you tell me where I probably need to be more granular. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So so let me maybe add just one comment. So what what we mentioned and hammered so to say into your brains uh, this this afternoon or this evening was of course to expect that gizma very international uh, experience and and the international experience refers of course also to our content so you do not just learn at gizma specific german content that's not what, what, what a German business school is like, yeah. So, so it would be surprising if you do not see overlappings, content related between an international school in the US, in Canada, and Germany. But I tell you what really differs. What really differs is the people. What really differs is the people like Ralph, my other colleagues, yeah, uh, the the service team. People like Paras, like Ravi, yeah, their their service-driven approach towards our students, um, even including myself. These these people, our Gizma team, makes the difference. That is what you can expect, and uh, and our concept, how we want to uh, how we want to apply this international content and make your job market ready. Yeah, I like to say. When you graduate with us, it is our task. First, you see here in this room, it is our task to make you so much finger licking good that the employers <laughs> in this world want to hire you. That is that, that is our mission. Yeah, that is what to expect, and that is the differentiator. It's the people that is the differentiator. Mm, all right. So thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much, Kiran, for your question. And with this, we have come to the end of this session. And I would like to thank all the four presenters from the business school for taking out time today and doing this session with us. And students, we know that there are still a lot of questions that we have not taken, but don't worry, your details will be shared with the with the business school. Plus, you will be contacted by the Sitra counselor. So whatever queries or questions you have, please share that with the counselors and they will be able to help you with, the, with them. So um, with this, uh, we uh, we end the session now. And once again, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Stephen. Thank you so much, Dr. Ralph, for taking up time. Thank you, Paras. Thank you, Ravi, for doing this session with us. And have a great day ahead. Thank you, Dr. Ralph. Thank you, stay healthy. Thanks ever so much. Thank you, Dr. Ralph. Thank you, Dr. Stephen. Have a good day. Thank you all. Bye.